This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion, where I cover anything in science, technology, business, or history. Artificial intelligence is generally good at pattern recognition and prediction, but what about creativity? In previous episodes, we've seen the first signs of creativity, or at least the mimicking of creativity. We saw AI research generating fashion models, or generating faces that don't exist from scratch, and creating living portraits, which interestingly since then has now made it into a TikTok filter. But towards the end of that episode, we touched on AI creating music. At the time, many people were surprised that things like this were possible, but today we're going to dive deeper. Being a musician and a producer myself, this was particularly interesting to me, but I think what you're about to see and hear will be interesting to most people. It brings up a fascinating philosophical question about human nature. Is it even possible for a machine to produce original music? What's the closest that we've gotten today? And what is creativity anyway? In this episode, I'll attempt to answer these questions. Let's take a look. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. To better understand the AI-generated music later in the episode, we should first look at how music is created by humans. When I think about music creation, it usually comes in two main forms playing live instruments and tracking them in software, or using digital instruments and arranging them also in software. At the genesis of either method, a song usually begins with a seed. In my experience, that seed can be anything from playing a guitar riff, a bass line, some synth chords, or even a vocal sample. When I listen to the seed, I begin to hear what comes next in my head and then I figure out how to get what's in my head into the computer and then layer it on top. And then I repeat the process until something begins to take shape. This is just how I imagine my music creation process to be logically. It may be different for others. Here's an example. So here, I'm just jamming out some different parts and triggering different loops that I've made. So I started off with this synth line. and then I hear a bass line in my head, so I play that bass line in. Interestingly, for the vocals in this, I used AI to isolate the vocal sample from a 1975 song. And it was just a simple website that allowed me to do this. Next, I just add some drums that I think would go with that. Then I just keep building part by part. After jamming out the tune to work out all the parts, I start putting it into a structure. And I just keep repeating the process and adding more parts that I hear in my head, and then playing them into the computer. And the end result is convincing. If you add some film footage on top, you can get something that has a pretty emotional effect. The only inputs are from what I'm hearing, that is, what I've already played, and the output is from my imagination given that input. Perhaps in my subconscious I have heard these melodies somewhere else, but I'm really not aware of it in this case. So let's compare this to AI. Artificial intelligence, on the other hand, listens to many examples, learns what the patterns are, and then creates something quote-unquote new. They don't need to consistently receive input from a programmer. Really, it builds on patterns it's learned from previous experience. So for example, a user can input two or more types of melodies, and then use machine learning to combine them in a new way. Could we say that it's somewhat similar to what other musicians do? We'll explore the answer to this at the end of the episode. For now, let's take a look at the state of the art in AI creating music. So currently, machines can make music in two main ways, 
either manipulating MIDI data or raw audio synthesis. We'll check out the best examples of both. Google's Magenta is a music writing AI that learns from previous melodies, drum patterns, and other sounds to create new ones. In 2021, a Toronto team created the Lost Tapes of the 27 Club, a project featuring songs written and mostly performed by machines in the styles of other musicians who died at age 27, Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison, and Amy Winehouse, to name a few. Sony has previously used the software to make a new song from the Beatles. So here's how it works. Each track is the result of AI programs analyzing up to 30 songs by each artist and granularly studying the song section by section, that is, drums, guitar, vocals, and more. For example, if you want a new guitar riff, you just input a bunch of guitar riffs from the original artist, and then the AI will produce a new one. The limitation in all of this though is that it can't do an entire song structure or it gets confused. So digging deeper, rather than the artist's songs being fed in and processed as raw audio, they're first converted into MIDI files. So MIDI files are basically bits of code with information that tells the computer exactly how to play a digital instrument, that is the volume, the length of the note, or a particular beat or rhythm, etc. Here's an example of MIDI for those who aren't aware. So you can see these lines that are drawn, and that's the digital information of the note. You can hear how it sounds. But see, I can change the sound of the note at will, but the MIDI information of what note it's playing and the length of these notes will stay consistent. So the AI works with this digital MIDI information. After examining each artist's note choices, rhythm process, and preferences for harmony in MIDI format, the AI creates new music in the form of MIDI files. At this stage, it's really a jumble of notes, and it's up to humans to sift through and pick out the best moments. By using artist's previous lyrics, it tries to come up with new lyrics in the artist style. But once again, these have to be sifted through by humans to make sense. Once the raw MIDI files and lyrics were in place, they were performed by cover artists. For example, Eric Hogan performed as Kurt Cobain. The Google team also created Ableton plugins, and I think this is really cool. In this example, it can listen to a bass line and automatically generate a drum pattern to go with it. Imagine you're a producer, uh, you're starting a new song and you have a, a bass line that you like a lot, but you know, you maybe either don't have access to a drum kit or you're not a talented or, or skillful drummer yourself, you can use the uh, Drumify plugin to take that bass line and, and create a, an accompanying drum beat to kind of continue your compositional process. So let's just hear a quick example of this in practice. So first you're going to hear a bass line um, that somebody made. So now we're going to take that and we're going to turn it into a drum beat to accompany with Drumify. <laughs> so that was just using the, the bass line, the onsets of the bass notes, extracting that rhythm, and then with, this, with just a few clicks, you can create a drum beat to go along with that. So that's just one example of the types of things we're working on. OK, so now let's take a look at a different method by OpenAI. And I think this one is pretty cool. So OpenAI has taken a different approach. Instead of doing MIDI files, it uses raw audio to train a model, and the model spits out raw audio in return, voices and all. I think this method for AI music creation is much more interesting. The models were trained on a raw data set of 1.2 million songs and used metadata and lyrics from Lyric Wiki. The program works in two main ways. Specify a genre, and it will make something from scratch. Or feed it a section of a song and let it continue writing that song. Here are some interesting examples.
But this second sample is interesting because for one thing, I fed it a metal tune and it completely changed up the feel when it took over. I had it generate three different songs and then I took the best parts and kind of mashed them together to make an AI remix. So here's that. So this is a little bit cursed, but also it generated some genuinely really cool stuff. I love the kind of push and pull of the groove that it generated. It is really interesting, isn't it? I also find it entertaining to listen to the unpredictability that comes out from time to time. There are limitations though. The further the AI gets away from the initial point of the song, the more the direction becomes unstable. If this happens, the song eventually becomes unlistenable. I remember that I'd always have arguments with my good friend who was studying computer science six or seven years ago. We argued about music specifically and if it could ever be created by an AI. I was adamant that they just can't manage the creative process like humans can. He, on the other hand, thought it was only a matter of time before it happened. But I do admit, we seem to be closer now than we ever were before. It was a fascinating debate and something that was worth discussing. So this leads us to the big question, what is creativity? Is it the expression of the soul, or is it just a set of rules that we don't yet understand? Let's dig into this a bit more. The Oxford Dictionary defines creativity as, quote, the use of skill and imagination to produce something new or to produce art. So, is AI creative? Let's break it down. As we can see, creativity needs three things, skill, imagination, and the production of something new. Let's tackle the last part first. In the last episode, we saw that generative adversarial networks, or GANs, do indeed produce new examples never seen before, so we can tick that one off. So what about imagination? Well, we need to define that a bit more. The Oxford Dictionary states that imagination is, quote, the ability to create pictures in your mind. And as we saw again in the previous episode, GANs can arguably do that, so we can probably tick that one off as well. Okay, so what about skill? Skill is defined as the ability to do something well. Well, let's see. This point is probably easier shown in images than audio, so let's take a look at some AI being creative in images. This is OpenAI's DAL-E, an AI that turns user-written text into images. Here's a set of images with the input text being an avocado chair, and another set of images with the input text being blue pumpkin mural. It's not like there's a database of blue pumpkin murals for it to learn from. So it is indeed creating something, and it seems like it's doing it from scratch. So, by all accounts of the Oxford Dictionary, it seems like AI can be creative. So what do you think about that? For me, something just doesn't sit right here. By definition, machines may be creative, but there was no soul or thought process behind it. In my view, the concept of inspiration is missing. Consider an artist calmly sitting in a cafe, watching the world go by, a particular smell or taste ignites a nostalgic memory in him or her. The feeling becomes the inspiration for a new seed in a new musical piece. Inspiration is part of the human experience, but we don't understand how that works. 
It seems simple enough, but it's kind of a mystery. So I guess today, with AI, we're beginning to understand the structure of creativity, but not much else. In a way, teaching AI to become creative helps us understand ourselves. But I think it really shouldn't be forgotten just how amazing the human mind is, and just how vast and intriguing something as simple as creativity is. We take it for granted sometimes. We've been referencing artificial intelligence a lot. If you're curious about that and would like to learn more about the inner workings of AI or a bunch of other maths and science topics, you can do that with Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org offers engaging and enlightening science and maths courses. I found their AI course to be very effective in teaching the underlying concepts that underpin the technology. If you want to support Cold Fusion and start learning, visit Brilliant.org slash Cold Fusion to sign up for free. The first 200 people that go to the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So thank you. Okay, so let's wrap up. We looked at the human process versus the AI process of creating music and touched on the philosophical question of what it means to be creative. I think both the practical applications of AI in music production as well as the philosophical creation is extremely fascinating. Okay, so I'm going to leave you with a Twitter page for AI generated art. It works by the user typing in a text prompt and the AI will dream up corresponding images. So thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe. My name is Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion, and I'll see you again soon for the next video. And if you're interested in listening to the full version of that song that I was making as a demonstration, it's already up on my second channel, Cold Fusion Music. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Cold Fusion.